In this project, we're going to be doing infinite terrain generation, and we'll be doing that by building on and extending the previous tutorials with a quad tree and level of detail. In movies, you often see these long, dramatic shots showing off huge landscapes, and if you want to be able to convey that same sense of scale in your own game scene, you need to be able to draw a lot of stuff, all the way out to the horizon, or even further, depending on the game you're making. In the past couple tutorials, we covered implementation of basic height maps before moving on to understanding how to generate noise and calculate fractional Brownian motion to improve the quality of our 3D world generation. Now we're adding on infinite procedural terrain and level of detail so that we can draw pretty much as much as we want. I'll start with a single piece of terrain from the last tutorial. What we need to do is work towards extending this to entire landscapes. To begin, what we want to do is update the terrain based on where the camera is, and I did that by creating this Terrain Chunk Manager that checks the camera's position each frame, so that as we move around and outside the bounds of that chunk of terrain, we generate a new chunk of terrain. And as I do that, you can see that the new one that's closer to the camera sort of pops into existence. The next step to making this more infinite is that instead of just generating a single chunk of terrain around the camera, we can generate a whole bunch. So we figure out which terrain chunk we're in, and then proceed to generate all the surrounding ones as well. And once you start moving around, it gives you a bit more sense of limitless. Since it doesn't matter how far you can go in any direction, we'll just generate more and more terrain. But this is really limited, because I can't keep extending this. If I want to just draw a few kilometers to the horizon, the number of tiles is squared, and I need about 100. And that's just at eye level. If I want a further out shot that I can see about, let's say, 20 kilometers, suddenly I need 1,600. This is getting out of hand really quickly. What I ended up doing was implementing a quad tree. Now, if you're not familiar with this data structure, it's a way of partitioning two-dimensional space by dividing it recursively into four smaller quadrants, hence the quad part. Now, I didn't see that many good tutorials in this, so this is how I got it to work. What you do is you set up a root node, which is the area you want the quad tree to cover, and then you insert the camera into the tree. Beginning at the root node, you check the distance from the center of the node to the camera, and if it's less than some threshold, in my case I use whether the distance from the center of the node was less than the width of the node times sort of a multiplier, if it's too close then we go ahead and split the node, creating four children. And you can see here that the way we create the children is pretty straightforward. Just bottom left, bottom right, top left, and top right. At that point, we recurse and do the exact same thing in each of these children. So for each child, we check whether or not they're close to the camera. If they're not, we do nothing. And if they are, we split and create four more children, and so on. Until we decide the nodes are too small, at which point we can also stop. Back to our terrain chunk manager. What I do is every frame, I create a quad tree and then insert the camera's position into it. After that, I go and get every single leaf node, that is, every node that has no children under it. Then we compare that list of terrain chunks to the ones that we already have. Everything that already exists, great. We don't need to generate those ones. All the new ones, we create new terrain chunks for those, which will then build the mesh and color the vertices as needed. And once we do that, voila. We have terrain stretching out for 32 kilometers in every direction. As I move around, you can see the terrain is a bit fuzzy and low resolution in the distance, but as we move, it gets smoother and higher resolution. From the top here, you've got a bit of a better view. The white ball is supposed to be where the camera is, and you can see how the terrain gets progressively less detailed as you get further away. As the camera pans slowly over the landscape, details closer to the camera come in. Also note that we don't require that many chunks of terrain to render this pretty massive scene. Dropping a breakpoint in the Terrain Chunk Manager, we can see that the quad tree only gives us 70 children. That means that there's only 70 chunks of terrain that we needed to generate for this entire scene. Again, looking at this from way above in wireframe mode, we can see that there's a lot of resolution closer to the camera, but it falls off quickly. And when you're on the ground, yeah, maybe you can see it if you're looking for it, but we're putting the resources where they matter, where they should be, up close to the camera. And if we were to try to do this with a fixed size grid, like we started with, it would require, a, well, each terrain chunk is 500 meters by 500 meters, so that's 16,000 terrain chunks. 
This isn't quite done yet, at least not for now, because uh, you may have noticed how the scene stuttered heavily as we moved, and it had to generate the new terrain. This is caused by the creation of all those new chunks of terrain. Even though there aren't that many, there are still a few, and doing them all at once is causing a slowdown. So what I did here was I went ahead and created this Terrain Chunk Builder class. And what this does is that you give it a list of terrain chunks that you need built, and it'll spread the creation of them over multiple frames. Each of the terrain chunks has a rebuild function, and I converted that into a generator, and that lets me spread the generation of the terrain over multiple frames, doing a little bit at a time. So what we do is focus on generating one chunk of terrain at a time, and when that's done, it gets removed from the list, and we start working on the next one. Eventually, when they're all complete, we swap the old ones and new ones all at once, and the new stuff appears. The other thing that helped was keeping a pool of terrain chunks handy, so that we didn't have to instantiate new ones all the time, but instead we reused old ones. You can see here that after we generate the new ones, we recycle the old ones, and those go into a pool. Whenever we create a chunk of terrain, we simply call create terrain chunk with the parameters that we need, and that checks whether or not we already have a pre-built one. If it does, great, it uses it. Otherwise, it instantiates a new one and passes it back. Now, there's a few better ways we could do this that we could work on next, maybe in a future project. Like, instead of using generator functions, we could thread this work off into workers. We could also skip generating any of this on the CPU and move this right into vertex shaders or even compute shaders if they're available. There's a lot of options for improvement here. And so there we have it, a quad tree implementation that gives us effectively an infinite procedural world. Source code is all available on GitHub, so fork it and go ahead and tweak it or do whatever you want with it. I'll be continuing this tutorial series in the future, so look out for the next one. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.